One. Yeah, good. Good afternoon. Welcome to LED Roofing's Lead Dormer Cheeks. Today we're going to show you on how we're clad in some dormers over in Great Bentley. A lovely job in Essex over here. Lovely day for it, as you can see. The sun is shining. So, as we look at this, you can see we've got three clips ready to go. The first bay is going to sit about here. We're doing 600 wide bays today. Luckily, this is quite a nice size, quite a nice shape, and it's all working in our favour. So we're going to put the first bay up here, gang nail it at the top. We might even screw it just to make our life that little bit easier. We've got these two bits of batten here on the front. They're just going to stop that first bay sliding out too far so we know they're flush with the front of the dormer. Right, hold on two seconds, we'll get this bay on. You'll see exactly how it works. I'll jump down there and we can see, I can show them exactly what you mean by the bay on the front. We'll see it, the bay on the front. Just so you know, you're not going okay. proud of the front. Out, mate. Come on. <laughs> Cameraman and labourer. The bays we have prepared earlier, these have all been made to size. Uh, the angle's right, and if the tops need to be trimmed a little bit, just uh, if they are a bit big, then that should be awesome. Right. Hold that for a minute, then. Huh? Big Don't bay. bend it, Bill. Don't Good bend lad. it. That's it. Good lad. Good. Good. Oh, it's the camera back. <laughs> Main cameraman's back on the job. So these should just push up nicely where we got ready, got prepared. Let's just slide down. Quick pause though, Bill. We might edit that out. Look. No, I said I said in there that they can be a bit big. That we made them, but you can see the angles nice. It'll be good on the straight. Yeah, it's just a little bit proud a on the top. Little trim, give you a little bit of room to play. So it's actually in it. We got a ten mil air gap, I believe, to allow for airflow. Yes. So, well, what we'll do is we'll quickly trim that down and we'll start. Again, we've just trimmed this. Hold on, hold. Right, here we are again. We've just got this first bay on. We've trimmed the top up by around about 10 mil. We will cut that felt back so you still get the airflow. We've got these preformed welts at the front. Uh, in fact, this is the first half of the welt, which is done to around about 20 mil. This is a piece of marble we've found, which has got a nice bit of weight behind it, so you can push it against it, bend it around it with ease. What we've done is we've got two clips on this first bay to hold the weight of it. We've got a couple of copper straps at the top with screws through it so it spreads the fixing point. We'll probably put a third one in the middle and finish screwing that up. Front, uh, lots of copper tabs on it. Very similar to this. Four copper tabs which are hanging out by, we said 20 mil for the well. So the copper tabs will be hanging out by no more than 15 to 18 mil just so that we can bend these copper tabs into the well just like that. It'll take a little bit of work quite and this is going to sturdy the whole bit of lead up yeah all this copper reinforcement is all that is just holding that well tight so this first bay is fixed on with no visible fixing so all the fixing will be hidden in this well the second one we're going to put on in a moment which you will see has got a slightly bigger well so as you can probably imagine already it's twice the size of this well we butt it up this side with the extra clips on the bottom, no clips on the side to start with because the clips are hidden in here. Put our first well in, put the clips down that side, the same process, use something heavy, level, batten, or like I say, we've found a piece of marble to dress a next well round, which we'll show you in a moment. There we go. Ready for the second bay. I forgot to actually tell you, these clips which I put on last time, you have to really get them tight. If you don't get them tight, they will show in your second welt, which you do not want. And as much as it will be unsightly, it will also rub against the back of the lead over time. Don't get me wrong, probably 20, 50 years, whatever. We'll wear for it. We don't want that. We want it to last hundreds of years, don't we? Hundreds of years, baby. No expense spared. It's a Code 5 lead copper tabs fixed with stainless steel fixings. It's got to be stainless steel or copper. 
seems to be right. Unfortunately, a bit more expensive, but the only way these rolls came off six meter rolls. I think it was 69 kilos of roll or something silly. What a treat. Fit in nicely. Gone straight in. Got them three little gap this. in the middle. Little tabs, as Bill's trying to tell us. We've got this nice gap at the top still where I've actually forced to cut the felt back this time. Don't worry about the slight discrepancy on the top there. This is all getting covered up with this lovely little core niche. Goes all the way around, mitered corners. Looking very Edwardian and very lovely, if I do say so myself. Right, we'll get this all screwed up the same as we have here. A couple of tabs on top. We'll get this bent round, same old process with the marble. Bend it round with our fingers to start with. But you can see this one is double the size lip than the previous one. So now on the new ones that we're putting on the right hand side will have a double size lip. The left hand side will have the single marble lip. So you can see as the marble can be put up against there. Key to this, I always say, let's get that first bit done with your fingers. <laughs> that glove on your thumb's looking no. like it's doing you the world of good. You have to be careful that the lead doesn't pull forward, otherwise you'll have too much going into your welt. What we have there, only one thickness of the welt. So I'll chuck the welt, my dresser in there, give it a little check back. Hope that that gives us around about 20 mil over again, which it should be by the time we've finished with a little bit of dressing. You see, most of that is in place just with a hand. start off with nails on the previous dormer but it's too bouncy there's only 11 mil ply behind in fact i think it's osb not ply um, you try and bang a nail through the lead without the copper strap obviously and it just bounces back out and you end up losing a bag of nails in little ring shanks which unfortunately are very expensive they're sort of 30 pound a kilo at the moment the same with copper strap that's about 100 pound of roll believe it not 25 meters of copper strap it's about 100 quid at the moment here we are this one's all fixed up the tabs are on there properly Holding it all in place, these secret tabs which are behind this well, which we're about to dress round. Now we've pulled it all into place with our fingers. You'll notice I've got my foot in place there, just holding the main of the lead back. Stop it pulling out unnecessarily. You have to take your time. You can't just dress it round once as hard as you want. I hope that it's going to be right because it will just pull out from this side. So we'll work it back again. A little dress down there, keeping everything as straight as possible. As soon as you start to bend that first welt, you'll start to affect the second welt and will get very frustrating. That's too big. You don't necessarily need to have something up against the back of it, but I find it just keeps everything in place that little bit better whilst you're dressing this round. Again, you're not going to do it all in one. Get it all in place as best you can. Start working your way back up again. Make sure it's hard in, nice and straight. Again, you want to keep this well when you're nearly ready, as tight as you can. So you know the back of that isn't going to foul against this next bit of lead as you walk the dressing round. We'll get onto that in a moment. But we're going to boss this round. Now pull this one tight, hide up all these clips and you will not be able to pull that off. No wind will be able to get that off there forever. And it was four clips we used on this one, three clips on the further connection and it'll be two clips on the, on the next one and then there won't be any on the last one. the trim that's going up there. So we're nearing ready. Being able to fold that round. Be nice this bottom bit here. I couldn't get my bit of marble in. So I'll use something smaller. Get the level that I've got to hand. A little bit. Oh, level. Level. Stress that crease back in. I'm not thinking how that's coming out. Very tight. 
speed, yes, sometimes it will we'll just keep bouncing when you're on bouncy substrate such as this 11mm OSB. Right, here we go. Stop bending it around again, work it gradually. Job at the bottom. I've got my glove on still, as you can see. <laughs> you need to have. Always wear your gloves. Lewis's one ripped off. Working too hard. You can see I'm pushing a little bit of weight against it again. Always keeping my left hand or my free hand or maybe even my leg against it. Stop it pulling out unnecessarily. If it does, just tap it back in. Don't get too impatient, don't get too carried away. So you can see secret uh, copper clips on the joints and then a bigger piece will join over there then it'll be folded round and then folded on itself again. There's two more bays to go in so we'll come back when they're in and we're just sort of bending the last bit over and patinating it up. Oh, we've still got the front to put on as well. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Three previous bays already. I just thought I'd show you how we're going to fix this last one. We've got two tabs on top the bottom. Two tabs on to hide the welt, which again, same old process. Folded around them hidden fixings, stick it in place. Use these lovely little pre made by Billy top straps to put that on. However, I just thought, perhaps we should show you this. Look, the soakers near at least two and a half, two inch up from the roof slate, plain tile, whatever you're using your soakers for. So you get no snow melting and driving back in. So again, same process. We've come up with the bottom straps two inches, so you don't get any water ingress through them. And the bottom straps are a little bit bigger. The bottom tabs, bottom clips, whatever you want to call them, they're bigger than all the other tabs for that one reason that we want the fixings at least two inches up from the bottom of the circle. Always looking nice. So that's the one we tapped down earlier. That's one that's been bent over but not been pulled over down and flattened. And this is one that's going in at the moment. You can see the secret tabs go in, get bent over, and the larger piece of lead with a bigger. And this last one just goes up flat to the dormer. 
But basically it's just a lot of bending to do now. We'll show you a video at the end once it's all done. Uh, it's all been bent over like that and then we'll be putting the front on just to finish it off. They're not doing a full front lead uh, on the front side. So it'll be a bit of wood that we're not paid to do. So that'll be for another person. But yeah, we'll just get on with tapping it. Dressing it. Yeah. Tappity tap, dressing. Give it a pattern up. I'll show you guys what it looks like at the end. Two. This is the last piece of this Dormer Cheek puzzle. It's pre welted this little bit here to go around these lovely clips, which again we've all been pre welted around that. Unfortunately, slight discrepancy on the front of this Dormer, hence why we put them battens down to straighten up our lead to start with. But that is exactly why these are all sort of protruding in and out, but don't worry, it is straight. Nice. Good slide on, hopefully. It says. All nice and tight down that wheel. And like we said, solid. And what this front is, it's a simple nail it. Obviously not in the middle of the lead, but near the edges, that's going to be covered by the next substrate that's going on. It rolls it in place nicely. You nail this every four inches. Straight down that edge. Can you see them? Can't see the angles too bad. Every four yeah. inches. At the bottom, I haven't told you all these sneaky bits on the side. Just because I thought I'd show you on this last one, but... And just cut that it's like 45 or oh, the same angle as the roof ideally so as it welts round it's not going to get trapped by the slate at all with any luck you can see the rest of that's now been bossed into position and that's the cheek done you would normally again unfortunately i've said that a lot today you'd normally pull the welt away from the large end every time so you're always pulling away from the well but due to the fact there's timber going down the front and we don't know exactly how wide the timber is going to cover we didn't want to pull this well around the front and risk jeopardizing anyone's timber work do that to do that? now just need nailing up this front again this is a different finish there might be finished his on dormers lead dormers that are all lead on the front but this one is going to be a wooden finish on the front just literally it's only this top bit that you can you can see on them one it's only the top bit that's really going to be covered by wood but this will be bent round flattened and then bent round the side and you can see on that one if i zoom in a bit you can see that well is around the side so the front is actually flat and all the welts are on either side all we've got to do now is patinate it up uh, for the second time, just to give it an extra bit of protection. Bring that welt round, now this up, and that's that cheek all done and dusted.